Assalamu alaikum and a very good day to all students. I hope we're all in good health condition, inshallah, and that you are mentally prepared to continue with our lesson. In this video, I will discuss on chapter 2.6, which is confidence interval for population variance and population standard deviation. But before I can start with the lesson, it would be best if you can have your formula book right by your side throughout this video. So if you don't have it with you right now, you might as well just pause this video and go get it. Okay, so are you ready? Now before we can jump into this subtopic, I need you to be very familiar with these notations. Now do you still remember what is the difference between these notations and these notations? Mm -hmm. Got it? Okay, let's check your answer with me. Um, sigma square is for population variance, while S square is for sample variance. And below here, sigma is for population standard deviation, and S is for sample standard deviation. That's right. So I'm glad that you can still remember, inshallah. Now, in this topic, you're going to learn on how you can use sample variance to estimate population variance and how you can use sample standard deviation to try and estimate population standard deviation. So these are the two formulas that you can use to find a confidence interval for sigma square and confidence interval for sigma. So right now I want you to flip through your formula book and find this formula. Can you find it? It should be on page 7, right? On page 7. But there is no formula for confidence interval for sigma. We only give you the formula for sigma square, but this should not be a big problem because the only difference between sigma square and sigma is just that you need to add a square root to the formula of sigma square in order to get the formula for sigma. So this is not a big deal. I don't think uh, you're gonna struggle on finding the on getting the formula, right? Okay, let's get on to the first example. Um, a random sample of ten rulers produced by a machine gives a set of data below in centimeter. Find the ninety-five percent confidence interval for the population variance and standard deviation of all the rulers produced by the machine. Give a command on the parameter estimate. Now, before you go and try to answer the question, first thing first, get all the information out from the question. From these questions here, from all this information up here, what info can you get? Including here. Okay, so from 95% confidence level me, you can get your alpha, which is 0 0.05. And from the table here, it's obvious that the sample size is 10. So these are the only information that you get from the question. So now let's continue and find the appropriate formula to answer the question. So here, they want you to find the confidence interval for population variance and population standard deviation. So therefore, you go on and find the formula for sigma square and for sigma. Right, so this is the formula for sigma square. Let's have a look at it. So in this formula, you have um, the element of n, and then you have s square, and then you have these two different critical value. Okay, come on, look at this carefully. This critical value on the lower limit of the confidence interval is different with the critical value used in the upper limit of the confidence interval. Okay, I'm going to show you how to find this later. Uh, so before that, let's check. What do we have so far? N, the other, which is equal to 10. And that's it. We What else do we need? We still need to find what is S and we still need to find the critical value here. So S, you can easily find from the data given to you. Just 
uh, input this data into your calculator and get the sample standard deviation, right? So therefore, you can get S. In order to get the critical value, you're going to be look, looking for the critical value from the chi-square distribution table. Now, everyone, please open up your formula book. Look up for table 6. Before this, we had been looking uh, to table 4 and table 5. Now, for sigma square and sigma, your critical value comes from the chi-square distribution. Now, this um, uh, notation here that looks like an x, this, this is not x. This is chi-square. Okay, so chi-square distribution table on page 38 and 39. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to find this um critical value. Uh, so let's have a look at the solution here. Okay, so this is the critical value for our lower limit, and this is the critical value for the upper limit, right? Chi square alpha over two o comma v. So v here is n minus one. Um, yeah. So alpha over 2 is 0 0.05 over 2, n minus 1 is 10 minus 1. So that gives us chi square 0 0.025 comma 9, right? So you go on to page 38, you find on the top column there, you go and find 0 0.025. And then on the side column, you find number 9. And then try to match these two, uh, these two inputs. And you should be able to find the critical value, which is 19.0228. Okay, I'll give you a few seconds for you to find the critical value for upper limit. Chi-square, 1 minus 0 0.05 over 2. So, you 0 0.05 over 2 is 0. Point, uh, 0 0.025. Yes, sorry. So, 1 minus 0 0.025 is 0 0.975. So, you should be looking at 0 0.975 and also at 9. So, by matching these two inputs, you should be able to find the critical value 2.7004. So, yeah, that's how you find the critical value from the chi-square distribution table. Please, please, please remember you need to find two different critical value one for the for the lower limit and one for the upper limit so once you're done you can just substitute them into the formula and um and yeah you can immediately get the confidence interval so this is the confidence confidence interval that you can use to estimate sigma square so your interpretation would be we are 95% confident that the population variance of the length for the rulers produced by a machine lies within 0 0.0048 and 0 0.0337. One question, should there be any units at this confidence interval? This is confidence interval for sigma square, which is variance. Is there any units for variance? No. There is no unit for variance, so you should not write any units here. Okay, so this is the confidence interval for sigma square. How to find confidence interval for sigma? So you just simply need to add on square root onto your upper limit and your lower limit from the above answer. And you can immediately get your estimation for sigma here. 0 0.0693, 0 0.1836 centimeter. Okay, because uh, standard deviation has units. So you need to write the units here. And the interpretation is also very direct. Okay, okay, so that's one example on how you can use the formula to estimate sigma square and also to estimate sigma. Uh, before we end the video, I need you to know that we also have the formula to find the confidence interval for the one-sided, one-sided lower bound confidence interval and one-sided upper bound confidence interval. 
Now let's have a look at it right now. Um, for the one-sided lower bound, your confidence interval should start from the lower limit, A, until infinity, right? And so your confidence interval should look something like this. Okay, so this is the formula for the lower limit, A. The, please be aware that alpha here need not be divided by 2, comma, infinity, because standard deviation can uh, be as big as possible, right? And next, for the one-sided upper bound, your confidence interval should start from 0, comma, B, which is the upper limit that you can use this formula to find B, right? Why do we start from 0 for sigma and sigma square? Because sigma and sigma square will never be 0. Sorry, uh, not only sigma and sigma square, even s and s square can never be less than 0. Standard deviation and variance cannot have a negative value, so it starts with 0. Alright? So, these are the formula that you can use to estimate sigma square and sigma. I would like you to uh, try these exercises in your module, okay? And then check your answers with the answer provided in the book. If you have any questions, please do uh, WhatsApp me uh, you, by the WhatsApp group, using our WhatsApp group, okay? So I think that's all for this video. I hope you understand my explanation and I'll see you again in my next video. So bye-bye.